In general, medicine treats us as though we are all the same. But next time you go to the doctors, wouldn't it be great if you were treated as an individual? This is what pharmacogenetics and personalised medicine is all about. In the future, you might be able to get medicines tailored specifically to you, rather than just being treated as one of the crowd. At the moment, clinically, we have a one-drug-fits-all policy where all patients are given the same treatment irrespective of their genetic differences. The purpose of pharmacogenetics is to optimise the use of drugs and we are now moving towards personalised medicine where patients are given appropriate treatment according not only to their symptoms but their genotype as well. The way that we respond to a medicine can be affected by our genes. If we have an unusual version of a gene or have extra copies, it can mean that we process the drug in different ways. Pharmacogenetics, therefore, involves carrying out a genetic test to see whether a particular drug is going to be suitable for a patient. However, some people do have general concerns about genetic testing. These include worries about misuse of sensitive information and whether they will experience discrimination based on their genes. Most people see genetic testing as a risk. It's going to label them, give some kind of tag which says, you know, I'm, I've got a horrible genetic disease. This is genetic testing to find out which is the best way to treat people. I think in the mind of the public, you genetic testing to somehow stigmatise somebody, but really you're genetic testing for a benefit here, a positive. The main goal of pharmacogenetics is to help prevent patients from having adverse drug reactions or ADRs. Genetic differences between people can influence the way that their bodies process a particular medicine. Two people might take the same drug. For one of them, it can work perfectly well and they get better. For the other, however, the drug might have no beneficial effect. More seriously, a wrong combination of genes can mean that taking the medicine would actually make their situation worse. The pills may end up making the patient more ill and in severe cases, an ADR might prove fatal. It is true that the genetic tests involved in pharmacogenetics are not quite the same as those involved in testing for a disease, for example. There aren't the same sort of problems associated with them. And also that the information that comes out of the genetic tests will be useful in helping to avoid really serious ADRs that can threaten people's lives. One of the most important parts of pharmacogenetics is grouping people on the basis of their genetic makeup. So in one group you might have people whose genes allow them to respond really well to a drug and in another people whose genes don't allow them to do that. And I think that raises two important questions. Firstly, which groups should drug companies target? And secondly, what happens to the people that are not in the target groups? So what if the group that responds best to the drug is the smallest group or it corresponds to the wealthiest people or just the people that are the easiest for the drug company to treat? It effectively excludes people that are in other groups or disadvantages those groups and perhaps they wouldn't be able to use these drugs. That's a particular problem when there are no other treatments available. I know that pharmacogenetics sounds like it's an amazing thing that's totally going to revolutionise healthcare provision. It's going to make everything better. I think we really need to remember that there are always winners and losers in these things. While the majority of people might walk away happy with drugs tailored specifically to their needs, others might get left behind. And I think that's really what's so controversial about pharmacogenetics. Because what if the person left behind is you? Mm.